The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Clay Nation, Mike Campion here with my new BFF, Gabby Milano, all the way across the country. Um, she started Supreme Cleaning June 21st. They're residential. They're in Long Island, New York. I have tried to hear the New York accent. It's a little. We got like 10%. So I don't, I don't know if I'm hoping for full on New York, but we'll get what we get. Anyway, Gabby, welcome to the show. What's shaking, sister? Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to start my day with um, great advice and just going back and forth with Mike. Oh, see, the problem is I was ready to start my day with adequate advice. So I don't know. This may not fit. I'm gonna, <laughs> great advice is, you know, that's more in like the three o'clock in the afternoon uh, gig. <laughs> All right. So for those of you that are just listening to the podcast, you can't hear the energy coming off of like Gabby. You should check out the, the video because this woman, she's got a smile. She's like, her energy is great. Before we start, I'm like, anything you need? She's like, no, nah, no, nah, let's just roll. We got this. Let's go. So yeah. um, two seconds in, I'm already digging this lady's vibe. All right, uh, Gabby, what's shaking your world? How can I help make your life better? So basically, um, I've been starting this uh, cleaning company. We started with commercial cleaning and I have a, a mentor and a boss and I manage his commercial cleaning company. So I told him I, I have actually history with doing residential in college. I was in college. I saw everyone's room was a mess. We all live out of our rooms like we need someone cleaning these people's room, being their mother and helping them have a fresh space because I believe keep it clean, keep it supreme. When you are in a fresh environment, your mind just works more organized, you know exactly what to do. You could you could do your day. So I just wanted to give that same vibe to all my classmates. So comes pandemic time, I'm like, I don't know what to do in my life. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have a job. Let me just go back to what I know, the cleaning, the cleaning lifestyle, you know? So um, I actually worked for a commercial cleaning for about nine months. And then, you know, we, together we thought, all right, let's be partners and expand this company and open up a residential park called Supreme Cleaning. It's a separate name from the commercial. And we have the prestige from the commercial. We're getting a lot of leads and clients from the commercial cleaning. But now I have different cleaners for the residential I'm trying to build a team there. Right. So the main problem is I, I don't want to get offended, Mike, but I don't we're kind of looking for a woman for for cleaning. And a <laughs> I don't know why I'd be offended, but I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll do my best to be unoffended that you're looking for a female. It's okay. I'm in <laughs> Phoenix. You can't hire me. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, um, we're, for homes, we're looking for more like woman cleaners. So um, I've been on a lot of like websites like ZipRecruiter and finding like jobility and finding people, but a lot of it's male. And then, you know, when it's woman, it's they're, they're 20 miles away. They don't have a car. And then, you know, to have consistent clients, you need to br be bringing your supplies you need to be having your car and um so i've been not finding the best well-rounded cleaner and now it's just my mom and i <laughs> running the company and so you found you found the best well-rounded cleaner it's just you which is <laughs> which yes. is not what you're looking for and my mother and where she <laughs> instilled the you know instills what like the having a clean home feels like and that's why i was so lucky growing up with that and i didn't know that everyone didn't have that you know, so I'm just trying to, you know, instill this in all my clients, you know, keep it clean, keep it supreme and, you know, keeping that fresh mindset. Um, right now I have three biweekly clients and my mother handles most of it because I'm also running the whole business. You know, I'm cleaning and I'm not done. You know, a lot of cleaners are done. You know, they're done after some of my cleaners are like, oh, you want to go for a coffee? I'm like, I got to still work. I, I have to now put in the numbers. I have to put in the supplies that we need now. And I have to do social media. I, I need I'm running every single part. And basically, my boss acts as um, a mentor and a consultant. So, you know, he's the person that I'm going to call. You know, he's my personal mic. <laughs> but the residential side, that's yours. You own that, correct? But we are partners in it. Yeah, but you are an owner and then you have a partner and then you exactly. help him as an employee for the commercial side. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, we only only have guests that are owners. So it's okay if you have a partner, but you got to be an owner. All right. Oh, yes, that yes, said, um, yes. yeah, for 
<laughs> for all of you that are on the, the podcast, I get it. So Gabby's got beautiful long hair and she's in, from New York. So she talks with her hands and she's knocking her hand. She's knocking her hair around with her hands. Her eyes are all big. <laughs> you were missing the passion of God. God save anyone that uh, invites Gabby into their home to like help them with cleaning services. Girlfriend is going to be passionate. She's going to be fired up. Uh, she's great. So you got to check out the video and, and see what we're dealing with here. You're missing out podcast folk. All right. <laughs> so what I'm hearing Gabby say is what it's a really common theme. Hey, I don't have, I'm having trouble getting the right people. So let's, let's dive into that. Um, first of all, you, you made, I don't want to say a mistake, but you made a decision that I think a lot of people make that might deserve a second look. So, and I'm not offended, I promise, but Glo- First of all, even though it's legal, so be careful saying we only want women because that that might be illegal yeah, in, in some areas. So I, I don't know. And this is a podcast for broadcast, yeah. so I'm not with the government. Le- you know, you obviously make sure all of you follow the laws in your states and provinces. Um, that said, aside from the legality of it, I would change so that hopefully Heritage said I'm looking for a woman, which is fine. Um, well, I don't know if it's legal or fine or not, but let me let me supercharge that. What I would encourage folks to do because we we do a lot of that. I'm looking for this. The I'm looking for, for me, would be someone that's a core values match, which is impossible to do if we don't have our core values exactly. and is able to do the job. That's it. So I will be, obviously we've got some experience in this and overwhelmingly the types of folks that are interested in residential cleaning are typically females. Oftentimes the types of folks that are interested in commercial cleaning are men. That doesn't mean there can't be great female commercial cleaners and great male um, uh, residential leaders. So the reason I'm sticking on this isn't, well, but your problem is you're t- trying to hire women and men are the best. That's, that's the problem. The problem is I think the standards that you're creating, whether it was short, tall, young, old man, woman, any of that stuff doesn't really matter. It's even, especially the, the, the mistake that most people make Gabby that you're not making is I want someone that has experience of cleaning, a good cleaner. I got to tell you, that is the last thing that we need, believe it or not. What we need is a good core values fit. The example I give often is I'm a terrible cleaner, but um, my core values are have fun, make money, be real, and help out. And if you had those core values and I started working with you, I accepted a job as a cleaner. I know I'm a dude. uh, And I live in Phoenix, but say we overcame both of those big big obstacles and I'm moving out there. I'm going to clean for you. Even though I'm a terrible cleaner and I wouldn't be interested because my core values are to be real, I would never take the job. And say I was going to do a good job if I wasn't going to do a good job. So I would do I would do my you know my level best to to serve you, because my core values have fun. You and my clients that were around and the people that were with me would also have fun because I'm I have a good attitude and whatever. Because I want to make money, I understand I'm not going to make any money if I do a crap job. You're not going to make any money if I do a crap job, and I'm not going to help the person um, who's hiring us who's probably trying to have us do that job so they can go make money doing that. No one gets makes any money if I do a crap job and help fun make money be real and help out because I want to help my fellow human. I'm going to do a great job. So even though I'd be a terrible cleaner, I would be an excellent cleaner for you. And again. I don't know how long I'd last, but if I took the job, I would do a good job. Now, the flip side is say there's a female who's been cleaning for 20 years and she's quote unquote, the best cleaner in the world. Um, she, oftentimes she's gonna be terrible because if those aren't her core values, a lot of times she's not trainable. She's not coachable. She's bossing people around. She thinks she knows everything. She starts calling her own shots because she's on a core values match. She doesn't want to help out. She doesn't care about having fun. Um, all of a sudden she's a pain in the butt, even though her skill set is higher. So I would for everybody, not just my friend, Gabby, I would get crystal clear on what it is you want and make sure it makes sense. So just dumb stuff like people will ask for a resume when people fill out their form. The problem with the resume is it assumes a competency in speaking English. If you want the, the resume in English, mm-hmm. I found some of my best employees have been Hispanic. And um, I actually speak Spanish. I'm from Spain. So it's oh, actually God perfect. Bless. I, I, I can like, translate. Yeah. Yeah. So that, oh my God, if I could, if I was bilingual, ooh, that'd be fantastic. Um, but again, some of my best, employees I've had did, were not comfortable speaking or writing in English. Um, mm-hmm. But if I require them to do a resume right off the bat, they feel that they're out and they're disqualified. Mm-hmm. And we go, well, I need a resume just because that's how people do it. But if you really think all I need, all I need is a core values match and someone willing to do the job, right? Mm-hmm. That's it. Literally it. And legal to work, right? If they're 16 years old or, you know, whatever. So legal, you know, but make sure that your actual standards of what you really want match what you're looking for. Cause if you go looking for females, people are going to go, Oh, I'm qualified because I have ovaries, but they might be a pain in the ass and not a, a match for your core values at all. You, exactly. There might be a, a dude that doesn't have ovaries, hopefully, um, or I'd like to meet the fellow that does. And, um, 
you're not getting you know in today's political climate that was actually <laughs> that was actually a controversial statement wasn't yeah. trying to be controversial let's let's have some common sense people um so anyway all that to say i the first thing i would do is really get clear on what it is you're actually looking for um mm-hmm. and then make sure you're you're attracting those people so talk to me about that how does that line up with the experience you've been having so um base what you asked me what i'm looking for or how i'm looking for people yeah how is yeah how how is the process you're using to look for people been getting results tell me what you're doing and what you've been getting so it's basically a word of mouth i've actually found from like f- my mom's friends who've had worker like cleaners in the past so we know they're capable of doing the job but something didn't work out so i actually contacted them and then i tell them the core value just being respectful that's really why the woman start another woman started working with me because she's like i feel like we have the same values by just telling her being respectful in someone else's home being communicative making sure um you know everything is l- being applied because I do estimates first and then I go always on the first cleaning. I like to go to manage and make sure everything's being applied. So being able to be respectful, communicative um, is really important for me as a worker. So oh, hold on, let me let me jump on one thing because you're gonna, you, you I love your energy, but you're gonna go off into, into hyperspace. So what I'm hearing you say is the way that we've been looking for people is via um, word of mouth. And both when it comes to attracting customers and attracting employees, word of mouth can be a beautiful tool in your box and it can also hobble companies. So yeah. it is very reasonable to expect if I hire Gabby and she's a rock star employee, the people that Gabby hangs out with are probably going to be rock star employees, right? Dirt bags yeah. can hang out with dirt bags, good people hanging out with good people. So that same with customers, right? If I have a high caliber customer I really like and has had a really good experience with me, it's likely that he'll know or she'll know people that would be high caliber because we're a good experience. So I would say my, I love um, word of mouth, things like that. That would probably be my first go-to thing. Yeah. That's there's, one of them. You yeah, know, there's the, one was right. Hold on, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to do this for everybody, not just for Gabby. Yeah. So the problem is I would say the vast majority of people I speak with use that as their only thing. So the one Achilles heel, and this is for clients or customers that word of mouth or referrals, repeat all that stuff the one Achilles heel is not scalable in the least, right? So once you've kind of talked to the people that you know, you've talked to the people that you know. I mean, I guess you could try and go meet new people, but that's a full-time job to go meeting people just for the thing that they might know. It's just a weird, it's just not scalable, right? At the end of the day, it's not scalable. So I love that being the first and foundation for everybody, not just Gabby, make sure that that's not the end, right? That's my beginning and end because you have no control. Sometimes you get some good referrals and it works out great. And then other months you get nothing and you're just like, well, I guess I can't grow my business. Okay. So what's, what's next? What else do you do? So um, like ZipRecruiter, uh, Jobility was an example as well. Um, Craigslist, I tried as well, but the problem that I'm finding is not having consistent days of the week. It's not like they have a schedule Monday through Friday. People like consistency and they like to know exactly how much money they're getting. And um, yes, you know, I know, I know we, um, you guys talk about like the salary, but I have to do it hourly now because I don't really have consistent houses like that. So I'm having a problem kind of growing and getting new houses because I don't have people, but then the people don't have a consistent schedule when I'm finding them. So there's like kind of this gray area that I'm in. So there's no gray area. And this is something that we help people with in our, um, when we work with them. So believe it or not, it is not a tactical error or tactical problem. It is a mental problem. So the big thing that we need to move from is a broken or poor system to attracting employees to an automated funnel that works all the time. Okay. So we make up stories like, oh, I don't have enough work. That has nothing to do with your funnel. So okay. we have this weird thing. Like if I interview a person or if I advertise for a job, I have to have that exact job ready right now. But that's just not realistic in the clean business. Anyone that's been around, <laughs> I know someone's been in the business for a while because I'll ask them, how many employees do you have? They'll go, today? Like now? <laughs> Cause that'll be different in an hour. And it was a different yesterday <laughs> and I know, okay, this guy's been around the block. So we make a bunch of beliefs that are not serving us. And the first belief is if I don't have enough customers, I can't get employees. If I don't have employees. I can't get enough customers. The right answer is we have funnels working for both of those all the time. It is okay to say no. Right. When I was single, I was, I guess, dating, right. Or willing to date. 
That doesn't mean if I was on, I'm super old, so I'm going to show my, my oldness because I've married 11 years. If I was on match.com, I don't even know if that's around anymore. Um, I didn't have to say yes to every girl that wanted to date me. And she would be like, what the hell, man? You said that you know, you're know you dating and now you say no. It's like, yeah, I'm looking for the right person at the right time. And that, so be it. And if I'm on match.com and I went on a date with somebody and I had a good date, I might go, I'm going to take a break for dating, but I might not have put down my match.com profile that instant, right? It's okay, right? Like we can just be adults and human with one another. So we always need a funnel that's bringing us qualified applicants and we're going to run them through that funnel, which can take a week or two, believe it or not. So that's the other thing is like, we don't want to start the funnel now because I don't have quote unquote enough work, but it's going to take two weeks for someone to get hired and someone might have quit in that thing. So we kind of make these weird rules of, I can't, start a hiring funnel. It's going to take two weeks to hire someone. Maybe it could take longer. And then someone might quit tomorrow. And we make all these weird rules that don't work. So you can have a hiring funnel. You can put people through the funnel um, and you can give them a try and have them have less work. The same goes with customers, right? Like, oh, I can't, I've got a waiting list. People are super proud of a waiting list. I'm like, already a damn mind. You're on a freaking for-profit business. Don't have a waiting list. Raise your prices and hire some people. So the right answer is you need to have a funnel going for client attraction that's working all the time. And it's okay to say, I'm sorry, we're overwhelmed right now. Don't do that. Raise your freaking prices and hire some people. But um, it's okay to say, I can't take you on right now, but it, give me a week and I'll call you back. Or it's okay to have an interview or even a second interview or be ready to start someone and go, I can only start you for a little bit of hours right now. So the big thing is it's a mindset shift from, I have to have everything perfect. Every job has to match exactly the right amount of people. And if people want 40 hours a week or 30 hours a week, then I have to modify my whole business to do that. No, we're going to tell people this is the opportunity we have. And if we have 15 hours a week or 10 hours a week, they have the right to say no. And you'll go, well, everyone says no, but that's not the truth. Maybe 62% of the people say no. You only need one person. So of the 38%, you only need one of those. So do you see how it's really a mindset shift, not a having to match everything up perfectly because it's never going to happen. And if you're required to have the, the employees match up perfectly with the customers to grow, not you at Gabby, but no one in the universe will grow. Questions, comments, rude remarks? Yeah, you, no, you're right. I got pretty discouraged because I told the girl, okay, I have one house. Like, we'll start w one house at a time. You know, like, we'll start training. And I gave her a location. She's like, it's not worth it. One house every other week right now is That's not okay. worth it. That's okay. You right? know? So, and, yeah. Again, if I'm dating and say, uh, I travel a lot. And I'm like, I can only be here a weekend, a, a, a week to hang out. Gabby's like, that's not what I'm looking for. I need someone around. Okay. There's, I love Gabby, but there's another girl. <laughs> It'll be okay. She should find a guy that's a good fit for her and I'll find a girl. Same thing with a job. But she's like, I need, okay, that's fine. There's some people that go, oh, that'd be great. I want to take a job too, to see if this works out. So we can both interview each other. So we make that, we tell ourselves that lie of if one person says no, that's now the new real. One person said, I can't work for 10 hours. Are you out of your mind? And then we just go, we make a global belief. I can't hire for 10 hours. Same thing. Someone stole. So we make a global belief. I can't hire people going to steal from me. Someone quit. No call, no show. We make a global belief. The reality is, yes, some percentage of people are going to act crazy. But again, I would not have married my amazing wife if on date one, some chick showed up nutballs. I'm like, ladies are insane. I'm done dating. Like I could make that judgment, but that's, that's crazy, right? Um, so I think the big, to just to sum this up, and then I'll give you a chance to answer any questions. The big encouragement I would give you, Gabby, is to move from kind of the small putting out fires. Like I did Craigslist and I did this and I did that and kind of try and put together a global system or funnel that works all the time. Um, so we're not constantly turning on and off and, and tweaking in and out and just, we're always hiring and we're always trying to, and that's what we help folks do, but we're always trying to make a funnel that is consistent and dependable and scalable, both for customers and employees. And that's a bit of work. It's kind of a pain in the butt and it can take a couple months, but you can build a million dollar company with just two funnels and a good financial system. That's all you need. So mm -hmm. I would shift from okay. looking at little things and just globally putting people into a funnel and going, this person said they're going to show up and they didn't. We don't go, everyone sucks. I have to change my whole hiring thing. We just go, well, that person wasn't a fit and we'll move on to the next person. Um, and so just give yourself permission to have a bad outcome for one person and not have that mean that you can't hire. Everybody's lazy. Nobody wants to work. Nobody will do this. Nobody will whatever. Just not the truth. Questions, comments, rude remarks before we wrap up. So do you think that was um, like, do you think it's mainly about communication? Do you think it's okay that I'm offering like, okay, I have one house. Let's start there and you can grow. Like the better we do at that house, the more work we can get. Is that something that um, is like well communicated to potential employees? Do you like so as long as you tell the truth, you can do whatever you want. Again, yeah. if again we were dating and I said, 
and I wanted to have 17 wives, but I lied to you and said, I would like to have one wife. That's not cool. If I said, I'd like to have 17 wives and you're weird enough to go, yeah, that sounds like a good plan. It's not for me. We'd have to find a state where that's legal. (laughs) But um, as long as I feel like you can, as long as you're honest with the person, you can kind of do whatever you want. So I shouldn't say whatever you want, but everything that's legal, you can do it if you're honest. So I don't know. I don't think it'd be ideal. That wouldn't be my system to have people do one house for a week or two or a month. That's not my ideal. But again, I'm going to, con- you're under the assumption you don't have an imp- uh, a client attraction funnel that's taken on new clients all the time. So I'm constantly going to be working on both of those funnels all the time. And if my reality, not my goal, but my re- reality is today, that's all I got. Is it fair? Is it good to tell people this is all I got? Yeah, that's it. Uh- <laughs> Like, and if, if now it's 86% say, well, then I'm out. That's okay. I just need, like, you only have the one house. You only need one employee. <laughs> you don't need, if you have 10, 10 people you talk to and nine say no, that's fine. You can't hire nine anyway. You just got the, well, you're going to need half a house. So again, I would get off the, the localized where we're at today and onto the big picture globalized plan of, I am going to have a same thing with your first client. Well, are you the only client I've ever had? Yeah, you're it. Well, I need someone that's got a lot more experience. Okay, well then I'll just go there, right? It, so I would get out, but that's not that's just the one time you're gonna have to deal with that, right? Then your second client is you mean you're to tell me you only have one? So these are not permanent problems. So yes, I would be honest with people. And if the majority of people say I need more than one house and only one guy or no guys, and again, the problem is if you only have one house, then you can do that. It's not that big of a deal. So for you to be able to sub someone out, because um, one house, assuming they're every other week, that's that's like Mm-hmm. an hour to a week. And I'm not saying I want you guys cleaning, but I'm not stressed out if I have to clean two to six hours a week. Right. And then once I get above six hours a week, now I can say to someone, I've only got six hours a week, but we'll have 10 by the end of the month. That's now that's a pretty Putting reasonable bold, deal. I guess telling them, you know, like it's going to start like that by the end of the month, I want to get you a house a day, you know, a house like five times a week each, like one. Yeah, as long as you're on. So the big thing is focus on the funnels. And we, we get tempted okay. to be like, I'm focused on who I'm talking to right now, what's going on right now, but that's not yeah. the goal, right? We got to elevate and go to build the company I want. I need a client attraction funnel and employee attraction funnel. I'm never going to lie, cheat or steal. I'm always going to go by my core values and I'm always going to do things that are within the law. Other than that, I'll do whatever it takes to make that happen. Right. And it's okay if 90% of the people say, that's not for me. I want more hours. Okay. We're just looking for the one. Um, you know, that's why I use the dating thing. I just need the one wife, right? I don't need all the women to like be a fit. Just the one. That's a perfect fit. Um, all right. Clean Nation, uh, we have done a ton of, I mean, gosh, 700 podcasts, well over 100 on hiring. If you would like more on how do I hire? How does this work? Because I, I know it's a deep subject and we can only do so much in 20 minutes. Go to growmycleaningcompany.com. Again, like I said, I've done two books, 700 free podcasts. There is an on-demand training that is the best to start with. It's the five shifts you need um, to grow a seven-figure company. Check it out now. I will see you there. Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me. But like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.